When I first read about the Vienna Smart Orchestra and heard the demos, I was really excited. I couldn't wait to get a chance to dig in a little bit, check it out. Um, I was shocked at the asking price. It's very affordable. Of course, I had to wait to make any kind of judgment till I got the instrument, got a chance to get it under my fingers, play around with it a little bit in the DAW. And so today I'm going to be sharing with you a first look and some examples of getting to know a little bit about Vienna's Smart Orchestra. Vienna Smart Orchestra downloads is just over 10 gigabytes. It's sampled from a 150 piece orchestra recorded in the Synchron stage in Vienna. It includes full orchestral sections, soloists, and percussion, all delivered in the Synchron Player plugin. Library is touted as being built for quick sketching and scoring with symphonic as well as experimental effects presets. It does require the VSL key e licensor, a SSD, and 16 gigabytes of RAM are highly recommended. This library normally sells for 175 euros. There are some deep discounts for registered users of Special Edition Volume 1 or Symphonic Cube for just 95 euros. It's also a intro price, which I'm hoping to get this video out before that intro price of 145 is over. Hi, I'm Don Bodan from SampleLibraryReview.com. Today, we're just doing a first look here of the Synchron Player instrument, which is Vienna Smart Orchestra. So I've got the instrument loaded up. As you can see, we've got uh, the Smart Orchestra, Smart Orchestra with bass instruments reduced and then no bass instruments, uh, as well as some effects presets, which should be fun. Let's start out with the Smart Orchestra here. As you can see, it's got a number of key switches color coordinated across the bottom. So the first one would be C0. Um, and that triggers our orchestras. As you can see, it. we've then got options for short percussive notes, long percussive notes, pads. And then we've got additional articulation triggers here. So let's start with all across the top there. Orchestra short percussion, staccato short, uh, string short. <laughs> Okay, except for flubbing some notes, I'm pretty impressed with the overall sound of this orchestra. Um, it's got bite, it's robust, the balance is really nice. Playing with it in the keyboard, um, you get a lot of responsiveness, playing soft. I can hear a nice low performance and then medium to hard. You get a uh, lot of presence and bite with there. We're triggering back all the sections um, with this patch, I believe. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump up to the top of the keyboard. You got percussion. What's nice is that although it isn't color coded, which I might have liked to have seen here, you've got some designation as to what's going on. Snare drums, triangles, triangle rolls, snare rolls, bass drum, bass drum roll. And we've got that expression for CC11, which we're all pretty used to. So let's move on through uh, some of the key switching now. And you can see we've got uh, C. And right now we've triggered the short. I'm going to go ahead and trigger 
the long with uh, A sharp, B flat. And we'll just play it here with these uh, orchestra long. I think you start to hear the power of this way this is set up here. If I'm able to have three hands or a foot pedal. I blow it with a bad note there. And that's normal. Let's go ahead and check out to you, Marcato. Gives us a bite, which is great. You're able to get more of a tack on your notes. as well as fortissimo right off the bait fortissimo arcado then pinissimo Get a nice, warm, yet quiet performance. Uh, of course, there's this tremolo. And a tremolo marcato. Oh, where are we at? Here we go. Ah, somehow I mixed everything up. Back to those longs right there. And uh, let's go back to the shorts here. Because we've got the difference between staccato performances. And a pizzicato triggered right here. For the softer performance dynamics for velocity. Gives us an ability to create something different with just velocity. And then from the purple. Uh, here, we're able to change focus on sections. So here's string pizzicato. And I'm not hearing much difference there. And maybe we're going to need to get into uh, changing up 
our main sample set here by going to orchestra with balance. And then we've got the really nice balance. This is very natural. You hear how when you're playing pianissimo, the bite of that mallet still comes across the stage, so to speak, virtual stage. That's exactly what happens. It'll cut through and rise through. Let's check out this. Just strings. That's with the pizzicato. We switch over to our staccatos. Let's check out the woodwinds. There's a really nice sound to these woodwinds. They sound very, they sound very organic to me. It sounds very natural. Um, I don't want to say pitchy because it's not out of tune. But what you do hear is the difference of what's happening with the player's embouchure, especially up here, up, up top, I believe. Yeah. Okay, let's move along. Brass. Short. I especially like the bite of this brass section. For the shorts, let's hear with the longs by themselves. That's just the normal setting. Let's see what happens. Go up to our marcato. Yeah, 
You've also got uh, the Fortissimo, as well as Fortissimo with Marcato. And I really like the way they respond. And Pinassimo. I think you get a little bit more expression out of these. Let's, you know what? This is turned off the whole time. And I think that, let's see, is this uh, velocity? Okay, so you either get the velocity sensitivity with harder or softer, or you can use the velocity XF as your velocity determinator. So it doesn't matter how hard I play. It's all determined by CC1. A uh, separate patch for mallets. Solo, full range. Look at this. This is exciting. Got um, the violins. A little bit of bite with that. I love when you can hear a virtual instrument's pads. It adds such realism. Just a tiny bit of this solo oboe. And there's a nice bit of different legato samples, it sounds like, that are being triggered. Loving that trumpet and the flute and oboe. It's 
go back and check out some additional things we could do. We've got pad and solo. So this is kind of cool in that we're able to select a staccato for our orchestra. And then I'm going to do the trumpet up top. So I've got two different keyboard splits now. So... We can do the same kind of thing, just uh, out of range. I'm gonna jump my keyboard back up, up, so that I got enough range to do the flutes. So. So what could be interesting here is to go with a pad and solo. Now we've got long held notes. Let's listen to it as uh Another setting here, change to string pad. And wrong note again. I'm not getting a change in pad, so I must not be doing this right. Soft pad with a horn. So it's overlapping here. note strikes again. And again. Uh, it's a nice warm sound, and I like the way you're able to play up uh, with this kind of thing going on. You could just change it if you only wanted woodwinds, and then you want your horn. That could be fun. Yeah, it's nice to have these kind of combinations here. Let's um, go ahead and jump over. I want to change up to the smart instruments with no bass, it says. Or actually, it says bass reduction. So it's a nice bite, but let's load up that smart orchestra, the first one. Very noticeable difference. Let's jump to the no bass and hear that. You 
Now, one thing I did not show yet in any ways, because I simply don't have enough of uh, these controllers here, um, although this would be inspiring. I'll tell you what, if, if this becomes a go-to for me, I would very much invest in one, two, three, four, five, six different more palette controllers because the ability to do a uh, MIDI CC dedicated to volume for strings, woodwinds, brass, mallets, percussion, and the solo instruments, that could be extremely valuable. Um, really give me something much deeper to play with. Uh, let's go dig in to the effects presets. I have no idea what we're in for here. This one's called the Shimmering Promise. So it's a pad. And it looks like we got variations. Yeah, let's check out a few more of these. This one's called Brooding Force. So it sounds like it's a, uh, as the name except, as the name says, X FX preset utilizing those orchestral samples. This is kind of nice. Air pad with strings. And turn uh, I know you can assign this learn program at oh wrong one learn program at there we go It's nice water pad. Earth pad. Last but not least, fire. Moving along, let's listen to this mod wheel. It says it's got something set up with the bees swarm on the mod wheel. Oh, it didn't load up. Why not? What's going on? Did I not click it hard enough? Let's try it again. Ah, oh, that's fun. And we've got a set of plucked uh, presets. Mm -hmm. 
nice. Just flipping through these, getting a first look. Yeah, this is a nice little jungle sign. Move on to these lead instruments. Hybrid flute bow. <laughs> it's nice. Very warm sound there. This one's called Soaring. Yeah, just doing a sampling of these. I just want to get a little, you know, an idea of what it has to offer. This one says it's called Trailer Percussion. I um, guess I was expecting more sound design if it's called trailer percussion. Let's try this punchy percussion. Nice and doomed percussion. And that is gonna wrap up the first look. Um, I've started to play with this. I'll include a link to a little bit of my first dabblings with sharing some of the ideas I had in layering and how you can think about developing a theme, an idea, trying to get the most out of it, trying to challenge yourself with your writing using the Smart Orchestra. It's just really simple little video, but I'll include a link to that below. Um, overall, I'm really pleased with the sound of this. I think that for me, honestly, the uh, orchestral instruments here are going to take a little bit of time for me to wrap my head around this key switching and trying to figure out exactly what some of these last section articulations do. So that's something I'm gonna spend a little time doing uh, and learning about. I love the sound of this thing. It is present and well-balanced and very live and realistic. And there's some things in that I'm probably going to be adapting when I need to pull off live orchestra. I could see how this would be great for sketching. And I think the biggest thing that I like about this library is that if I sketch with it, I know I could use what the output is because it sounds, it could sound so good. Um, lots more depth to this library, obviously. I'll include a link to Sticky Street over to the Sample Library Review Smart Orchestra page, where we'll have all the official demos and all of the other videos I find, any other walkthrough videos, uh, the any other review videos I find, just so you can get a chance to, to really have a chance to 
get to learn everything about the library if this is something you're interested in picking up. At this price point, I'm going to say it is a great buy. Honestly, for what you get, this is a great little buy, especially for those of us um, either coming from rock or electronic backgrounds, uh, as well as those of us scoring for media under super tight deadlines. Sometimes I have uh, as little as one day. Uh, if I have three days, it seems like a luxury sometimes to finish my uh, commercial projects. Um, love to hear your thoughts about uh, the Smart Orchestra. Comment below. Tell me what you think about this. If it's something you'll be picking up, please like, share, and subscribe. I always love your support. And be sure to head over to SampleLibraryReview.com for latest news, reviews, and our weekly deals page.